barricaded roads, locked shops, agitated crowd, all indicators that all is not well in Abia State, Southeast Nigeria. And these spent cartridges are evidence to that effect. Allegation leveled against the Nigerian army by the residents is that of murder. And the people are crying out for justice. They shot three people wearing black and black, black polo and uh, jean, black. They shot them, three of them and carried them away, the soldiers. Proclaiming the innocence of the army in a phone interview is the deputy director, Army Public Relations of the 82nd Division, who insists that some people are manipulating events to discredit the army, whose presence, he adds, is merely coincidental. That is true, it's an allegation. An allegation remains an allegation until proven otherwise. These are issues mostly based on propaganda and misinformation. There is no evidence. If somebody is claiming somebody has killed somebody, then let me see the evidence. At no point shall we or should we degenerate to the level of killing innocent uh, Nigerians. The soldiers that are operating in Aba, just like those in other areas in the southeastern part of Nigeria, are there for good, for the peace, security, and stability of Abia State and Abai in particular, and other uh, southeastern states. Nobody, nobody is negated, nobody will be harassed or molested. Not taking chances, security patrol vehicles are out to quell any uprising. This, the police commissioner says, will deter those with ideas of violence. People take the law into their hands. Go attack and destroy property. There are hoodlums. If you carry out peaceful agitation, it's a different thing. But when you turn to violence, of course, we should not stand idly by to allow you to get away with it. And because of that, everybody is already being directed to take the necessary step to enforce the law. I think nobody should test the will of the states. We should deploy people to go and ensure that the goal of that area is clear. And wherever there are those pockets of good long no activities, we should ensure that uh, you know, it's clear. All harm no, is on deck now by security agents to make sure that we don't allow the good ones take advantage of the As the crisis lingers, there will always be two sides pointing fingers at one another from a distance. What many believe will be better is if the reasons for the agitation are resolved before words no longer matter. And now to our major story of today. The military operation and the activities of IPOP in the southeast in the in Nigeria is getting everyone talking. But what is obviously more disturbing is the element of misinformation and the spread of hate messages. A alleges B, B alleging A. Online, offline, the debate is rife with many apportioning blames. Those preferring the way out are quite scanty in rivers. 32 members of the indigenous people of Bahafra IPOB were arraigned by the River State Command of the Nigerian Police Force for the alleged clash between IPOB members and some residents of Oyibo local government area of the state. The suspects, according to the Commissioner of Police in the state, Zaki Ahmed, were arrested for allegedly causing the breach of peace and destroying properties and also killing a police sergeant during the crisis. Today, there was an incident of arson in Abia. A police station was burned. In Kaduna, the government there is no uh, reason for says there is no reason for panic, especially for Igbos who live there. In just there is a report of violence. Now, let's discuss this disturbing trend. I have with me in our Abuja studio a regular analyst on channels television, a lawyer based in Abuja, the nation's capital, Mr. Daniel Boala, and also the public uh, relations officer of the Nigerian Police Force, Mr. Moshu Jimo. They both join us from our Abuja studio. Let's get the conversation started, shall we? Let's begin with you, Mr. Moshu. Um, the, the, the Inspector General of Police was at the presidential villa earlier today. What is the decision of the president? Is it that the soldiers uh, are to leave the streets of Abia, and when will that happen? 
Oh, thank you so much. Uh, I'm not in position to comment about whatever the president is going to say or what the president has said. Uh, but on the side of the police, since I speak for the police force, we have increased our deployment to Abia State and equally all the South South East State and the South South State to ensure that uh, Nigerians are allowed to go about their lawful business without any hindrance and without any fear of apprehension. Uh, in the earlier hours today, our station at Arira Market was uh, attacked and raised down. Though we don't record any loss of life because the policemen repelled the attack. Uh, but normalcy has since been restored and investigation has commenced into that uh, act. And we want uh, people in the southeast, uh, equally uh, the indigenous and people that are uh, equally not from the area, that they should be uh, very sure of their security because we have done enough development to continue to protect them. Uh, outside that, we want to employ on the uh, the, tra the traditional rulers and uh, the opinion leaders and re religious groups to equally prevail on them to see reason why they should allow peace a chance because uh, whatever is the eventuality of causing this upon public peace is not going to pay anybody. Uh, we are uh, hope and doing, um, uh, Nomas have been restored in both Abia and Uma here, and we are going to ensure that we key into this to ensure that we sustain the present peace that we are having. So as we speak, and not, uh, no matter, everybody's going about its lawful business except for ab, uh, about where uh, the coffee imposed by the state government is strictly being enforced. So uh, for now, uh, there's no any cause for uh, any apprehension around the area. We understand that right now that there is a new commissioner of police in, uh, in place in Abia State. Uh, in the middle of all of these, with, with the arson case that we saw on the police station there, definitely the police must have a new strategy in handling uh, this case. Uh, what exactly is the new approach of the police on this matter? Uh, thank you so much. It will not be appropriate for me to sit down here and begin to tell you our modus operandi, probably the strategy we are going to adopt. But uh, the, the, I, I've just spoken with the assistant inspector general police in charge of Zone 9, uh, Uma here, before I enter the studio. And, uh, he's currently have the, deployed the strategies uh, to be enforced and he's working for us. So uh, in, uh, uh, changing the commissioner of police uh, is, uh, not, uh, shouldn't be uh, what people should, should be thinking that is not appropriate. Uh, the, the change has been effective even far, far before now, this to bring new impetus into uh, crime prevention and control in that area as regard uh, the, uh, the, the, this group that have been causing uh, disturbance of uh, people's activities within the area of the operation. So we are working in synergy with other security agencies to ensure that we sustain uh, the protection of life and property in the area. Is man reinforcement that is, do you have uh, in place now? You said that there's going to be a reinforcement to Abia State and some other southeast region. How many are you looking at? Uh, thank you so much. I only said reinforcement has been done and uh, more is being added. Uh, like uh, as at last week, uh, more deployment of police mobile force have been done uh, for, uh, for effective operation of our. Uh, of, of a camp prevention strategy and to ensure that people are in peace, it won't be appropriate to begin to let you know that this is the actual number. But more mobile units have been deployed uh, across other locations in the, in the country to uh, Abia State, to Anambra State, to other Southeast states. You know, Anambra uh, very soon will be going to governorship and House of Assembly election. Uh, this is to ensure that uh, criminal elements are removed uh, from the street before the election. And uh, more other uh, strategies have been adopted as we speak. And as we speak, situation is calm. And and uh, more deployment have been done on the street and more and more uh, personnel of the force, especially those who are directly involved in, the, in discharge of core police duty and uh, in ensuring that there's law and order, especially uh, equally uh, those responsible for quelling riot uh, have been deployed to Abia State and the neighboring states in the southeast. Let, let me go to uh, Mr. Daniel Boala, uh, the lawyer there and the policy analyst. Uh, with this sort of situation that we have on the ground in some part of the country, it looks like uh, it's spiraling from one state to the other, and it has, uh, it's like a coal, and we're seeing this effect happening. What do you think that the leadership of the country perhaps should be doing right now in this kind of situation? Well, uh, thank you for having me. You see, what is happening in Nigeria today I will say with the greatest respect is that gradually the country is drifting into a situation where we are practicing democracy by ambush. Because when a civil populace or a group of persons make a demand, but not through the constitutional means, then they are taking the government by ambush. Because the constitutional means 
of agitation is through the elected officials from those regions. Take, for example, let's take the case study of Nam De Kanu. He made clear his demand, and that is that he wants a cessation from Nigeria, and therefore he's calling for a referendum. Now, ventilating your grudge is consistent with the Constitution. Everyone has a right of expression. However, there is a constitutional procedure for ventilating your grudge, and none of which involve, for example, the hoisting of flags, generating of uh, currency, uh, creating the national anthem, uh, 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 calling for the murder of the president of the Federal Republic, threatening that there will not be election in another part of the country. So clearly by this act, Nam De Kano, with the greatest respect, has stretched the exercise of his right beyond constitutional means, which is the reason why he is being charged in the court of law, and which is the reason why I also believe that the army in the first place ought not to have digressed to his house as alleged, because doing so will mean that they are prejudicing the court. In any case, there is an allegation against him and a standing trial before a competent court of law. But you cannot question, for example, the deployment of army, not just in the southeast, but in any part of the country, if, for example, there is a credible evidence that suggests that there is a need for a proactive step to be taken by the main of the service force in order to avoid the problem. Because they have had similar operations last year in the southeast during the period of Christmas, and a lot of people celebrated that because it stopped to a large extent armed robbery, kidnapping, and all of that. They have had similar operation in the Niger Delta. They have had similar operation in the North. So it is difficult. And even Kano, I listened to some of the, uh, audio, the video, he never condemned Operation Python Dance. What he condemned was the detour of the members of the army to his father's compound. I also listened to his lawyer. He did, in fact, the lawyer even stayed stated in clear terms that there are designated routes that the army ought to have followed, but that they digress to Kano as compound, which is the reason for the agitation. So there seems to be a consensus, even by the agitators, not as it were, criticizing the army for going there, but that digression to Nam the Kano's place will naturally generate a reaction. And that is very unfortunate, if the reports that we have had is actually true. Uh, Mr. Moshid, if you tell us... Uh... As, as it stands right now, we're seeing situation in Abia, Rivers, Jaws, and uh, you, you, focus, you focused on the Southeast region. But stopping this sort of violence because Nigerians of different ethnic groups are spread across the country. What is the strategy right now? Uh, thank you so much. You know, before this period, there have been issue of uh, threat and counter threat, uh, which the uh, Inspector General of Police, IGP, Brian Putu, Idris, MP, MNI, have met with the Assistant Inspector General of Police in charge of Zone, uh, the Commission of Police and Command, and have directed them to ensure that uh, the, the, their personnel on the ground and a uh, varying degree of prevention strategies are put in place to ensure that these threats are not actualized. That has been ongoing and security has been beef across the country, not only in the south, south east or the south south. Uh, for the concern of any uh, reactions uh, which may lead to breakdown law and order in other parts of the country, Commissioner of Police have been uh, put on red alert. They are equally uh, to be personally on the ground to supervise the security arrangement. Uh, having said this, uh, I want all Nigerians to know that we are, we, are, we, are, we are on the ground and we equally ensure that we sustain the peace that being enjoyed across the country. I know any group or individuals will be allowed to hold the nation to ransom at, in any part of the country. Uh, having said this, uh, we, uh, we, 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 we on the ground, like I said earlier on, and uh, the, our intelligence are equally being put into uh, effective use to ensure that we uh, gather information and uh, necessary intelligence that we are going to work on to to ensure that we need to debunk any eventuality that may come from uh, any part of this country. But as we speak, there's no any, uh, any uh, cause for alarm, like I said earlier on. People should go about their lawful activities without any fear or apprehension, as okay. everything is being done uh, f from the police commands and equally at the level of the first quarter to sustain the uh, peace of generality across the country. All right. Now, we take a break. Abia, Rivers, Joss, emotions are running high. The tension is growing. How do we arrest this? The, con the conversation continues after this break. Join us again. The security situation in the states in the past few days, which led to the deployment of soldiers into our state ahead of the Operation Python Dance 2, 
has become of great concern to both government and the citizenry. After several interventions, I want to inform you that by tomorrow morning, there will be gradual withdrawal of soldiers from the streets of Aba and Omaha. Apart from the pre-existing military checkpoints at various locations in the state, originally designed to curb kidnapping, armed robbery, and other violent crimes. With the expected exit of the soldiers from the streets, we must warn that we will not tolerate agitators and protesters taking over streets for any reason at all. I will also be meeting the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, President Muhammad Buhari, to discuss possible ways of relaxing the Operation Python Dance 2 or Egweke in the state for now. Our attention has been drawn to the ugly incidences of attacks on police stations and military posts at Aba, Omoahe, and other locations. The highlight of our meeting is to obviously ensure that. Uh, you know, our, our provision of security all over the country is, uh, is intact. I'm sure you're monitoring very closely events in the southeast of the country. Obviously, I think that's the main concern now. Now, what are the strategies you're adopting? What plans uh, the you strategy obviously we're doing is to ensure that uh, we deploy policemen all over the country. Two, we're we are in touch with the government. Try to also mobilize the political leadership to be able to intervene where necessary on how to lessen the tension that is presently taking place in the northeast. I mean, uh, sorry, Southeast. Now, uh, we came, Governor of uh, River State made a sweeping accusation yesterday when he said most of the crimes committed in the state are done by uh, your members, SAS did precisely. What would be your reaction to this, sir? Obviously, everybody has the right of uh, self, uh, what do you call it, expression, right? That's his right. And you know he's a governor. You, you know he's a state governor. Right? Obviously, I have to deny that. That, that, is, that is nonsense. Uh, look, you know, what I'm saying is that I, I just want you to read before, between the lines. If you have leaders making sweeping allegations, you know, obviously it's not... Uh, I don't want to comment on it. It, it doesn't make sense to me. Welcome back, everyone, and thank you so much for staying with us. The situation in the southeast region of the country is what is taking our attention on the program today and just how that situation can be arrested so it doesn't go beyond all of this situation, arson, destruction of properties, clashes. All of this situation is boiling by the day. Curfew, some of the reactions that we have seen over the last few days. In our Puja studio, we have joining us on the program now is Dr. Sam Amadi, a lecturer at Bayes University, constituent lawyer, and also Mr. Dan, uh, Daniel Buala, a lawyer based in Abuja. Both of them are now with us on the program. Let me quickly come to you, Dr. Amadi. Uh, as it stands right now, it seems to be an extraordinary situation that we have in the country based on the constitution of Nigeria and uh, standard practice globally. What do you think, uh, legally speaking, that the president, as the commander-in-chief of the armed forces, should be doing in intervention uh, on this matter? Uh, thank you very much. I think first is to say what is the legality of the deployment of uh, soldiers on the streets. First and foremost, the president has part of what we call Section 5 powers, or the president includes the power as the chief executive to maintain the law, maintain security and uh, orderliness. That's number one. Uh, the constitution is very clear. Section 217 and 218 makes it very clear that the present power to deploy troops are limited. First, external aggression. He would, of course, need um, National Assembly resolution. Uh, he needs it to protect internal attack against Nigeria. He needs that. And, of course, that's a, a clause that's called when in aid of civic, civic authority to suppress insurrection. Uh, th that word is critical. So uh, in the U.S., of course, they have it, Article 2 powers at the present. It also includes uh, the power to use limited use of, of so military and civic engagement. And those uses are predicated on one, when to quell real civic disturbance of the nature, calamity, unexpected calamity, and of course, natural disaster where the National Guard could be at the request of the states. Now, what comes out clearly from all these jurisprudence, including our own Court of Appeal, in the case of, interestingly, 
Buhari against Obasanjo, the Court of Appeal made it very clear that you cannot even deploy uh, soldiers to do election. Of course, election comes with uh, some perception and, of course, threat of, of violence. And the Court of Appeal says, no, 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 no. That must be, that's not one of the things you can use the military for. So, first argument is that, yes, like uh, my colleague has argued, some actions of some persons could be illegal, then the police can handle it. It's facing trial. If there are issues of kidnap, the police says part of the reason, two justifications. One is to do with crime, described as kidnapping, armed robbery, and what they call agitation. Now, look at it very well. Kidnapping, armed robbery are those exclusive responsibilities of the police under Section 215 of the Constitution. And so the police has mandate to do that. And then if there's a threat to break down of law and order, if there is insurrection, riots of the type that the police cannot quen, quen, then the military can come in because those ones are now threat to national security. So essentially, we have to draw the line and say the agitation, agitation, that's an important one. Agitation is constitutionally permitted, like my friend said, under the constitution. So it does not really amount to insurrection, as a constitution. It doesn't amount to quelling civil disturbance, as American uh, um, deposit um, dictatum act, commentatum act of the U.S. puts it, two categories. So essentially, truly, the parent meant well, or the, the chief of army staff or the defense staff meant well, but this is conceivably an unconstitutional deployment of force. Uh, the threats that are first kidnapping, armed robbery, of course, Abuja, Lagos, Abuja, Kaduna Road, perhaps it has the highest per capita of uh, uh, kidnapping, Lagos, Evans, and all the stories, makes Lagos, everywhere in Nigeria is kidnapped prone. So that is really no justification. All right. and uh, let's really look at um, the, 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 the resolution of some of these issues. And let me come to you, Mr. Buala. In this kind of situation, in strategic planning and resolution of conflict, uh, what do you think is best for us to, uh, in handling these cases to stop some of the situation in that southeast region? Well, as part of a uh, strategy for conflict resolution or even mediating violent conflict, sometimes you need to engage. First of all, you start by using the neutrals, and then you engage the principal actors on both sides to sit down so you can have a round table discussion. Now, were it not for the criminal action that has already been instituted against Kano, I would have advised that the federal government should call Kano through whatever ministry, call Kano and have a word with him. But it may seem that the southeastern governors have had the first meeting with him in which there seems to be an agreement in some sort and which they are supposed to build on it. That is the first step. Now, at federal level, it is dicey. If the federal government, for example, calls Kano now to dialogue with him in order to find a lasting solution, what it then means is that let's assume that the federal government reaches that conclusion. What happens to the criminal trial that Kanu is standing you know, before the court of law? Should the federal government interfere in the judicial act of the state to get him acquitted? That is another thing. But nothing stops the federal government from taking the proactive step of engaging the people because as it stands, the agitation seems to be gathering momentum. It is just too late to assume it is in fact to prove that it is genuine, which is the reason why the army is there. And if care is not taken, there is going to be a reprisal effect. For example, in other parts of the country, there are people who honestly believe they are being marginalized. They also are looking at the situation and can tomorrow begin to say they are going to agitate. Right. So let's allow, let, let's let's allow Dr. Samamadi to, to give us a, a, a final thought on, on, on the matter now. Dr. Samamadi, online, offline, we're seeing uh, uh, a reprisal effect of these. We're seeing uh, a, a dovetailing effect into some other parts of the country. In terms of political leadership and the way to go, what would you suggest? If you can give us your, so, uh, your submission in about 30 seconds before we go. I would suggest quickly, Mr. President, cause the governors of Southeast and the traditional rulers, if the case be, makes a clear case that, look, I am for protection of life and property in Southeast because it's about trust. People feel this is a form of perhaps ethnic cleansing. People feel all kinds of you know, rumors everywhere. So the president can take charge, call, make a, a statement, commit the governors to go back and say, people in Southeast be peaceful, no reprisal, don't attack uh, military targets, don't attack House of Fulani or uh, Yorubas or just nobody. If the governors extract that commitment, Mr. Prent makes a statement, assures everybody, and then initiates a, a withdrawal of the troops. First and foremost, 
it's unnecessary. Look at it this way. They, this, if it's aimed at Cowan and Owen, and they said it's a parade or a show of force, it's not going to work in the long term because these actions, all these videos of drowning, will be a mobilizer for IPOB. Look at what happened in the U.S. When Bush went on those mindless clam down, they, called, they went back and discovered they need to fight for the hearts and mind of, of the people of Iraq and Iran and right. uh, Afghanistan. So the prince should take charge now, okay. bring back the troops, right. and say, look, this is not about cleansing, and the governors go and speak to your people, assure them, no uh, reprisal, okay. let's now walk back. Then Dr. Sam Amadi, uh, I'm afraid we need to go. Uh, Dr. Sam Amadi, uh, f former uh, chairman of NEC and uh, a constitutional lawyer, lecturer at Bayes University, and of course our friend, uh, Mr. Daniel Boala, member of the London, uh, Lincoln Inn in London, a lawyer based in Lagos. Thank you so much, uh, in Abuja rather. Thank you so much, everyone, uh, for the program tonight. I'm Shion Akimbalui. Bye for now. Day and night, we are on the road, following all the stories, and it takes a lot to earn your trust, to give you the coverage you've always trusted, because no one has more experience to tell your story, to keep you informed. Use a tag. in the states in the past few days, which led to the deployment of soldiers into our state ahead of the Operation Python Dance 2, has become of great concern to both government and the citizenry. After several interventions, I want to inform you that by tomorrow morning, there will be gradual withdrawal of soldiers from the streets of Aba and Omaha. Apart from the pre-existing military checkpoints at various locations in the state, originally designed to curb kidnapping, arm robbery, and other violent crimes. With the expected exit of the soldiers from the streets, we must warn that we will not tolerate agitators and protesters taking over streets for any reason at all. I will also be meeting the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces President Mohammed Buhari to discuss possible ways of relaxing the Operation Python Dance 2 or Ebueke in the state for now. Our attention has been drawn to the ugly incidences of attacks on police stations and military posts at Aba, Omoahe, and other locations. We hereby warn that we will no longer tolerate that and all other acts that are capable of causing insecurity of any form within the state. We have also observed illegal acts of throwing petrol bombs and setting up a bonfire to obstruct free movement along some roads by suspected miscreants and wish to warn that such acts should stop forthwith. To mischief makers who want to use up their state as their base, let me announce to you that henceforth, Abia will be too hot for you to carry out your wicked acts as government will work with security agents to ensure the protection of lives and properties in the state without fear or favor. There will be no hiding place for you after this moment.